William James, Pluralistic Universe, still in Lecture 8, where he's drawing his conclusions. Arrived at this point, I ask you to go back to my first lecture and remember, if you can, what I quoted there from your own Professor Jacks. What he said about the philosopher himself being taken up into the universe which he is accounting for. This is the Fechnerian as well as the Hegelian view, and thus our end rejoins harmoniously our beginning. Philosophies are intimate parts of the universe. They express something of its own thought of itself. A philosophy may indeed be the most momentous reaction of the universe upon itself. It may, as I said, possess and handle itself differently in consequence of us philosophers with our theories being here. It may trust itself or mistrust itself the more, and by doing the one or the other, deserve more of the trust or the mistrust. What mis trust itself deserves mistrust. Good grief, there's a lot to connect to here. Uh, there's the passages on um, uh, trust in uh, The Will to Believe, the essay. Um, uh, find the passage about um, uh, jerks who rob people in train cars in The Will to Believe, the essay in The Will to Believe, and other essays in Popular Philosophy, the book. You'll find some connections to make there. Okay, so the major connections here, though, are to uh, his own book. So he says, let's go back to our first lecture and remember the insight from Professor Jacks that the philosopher who's trying to make sense of the universe is part of the universe he's trying to make sense of, and that means his own efforts to make sense of the universe may have some effect on that universe he's trying to make sense of. That makes sense. We are parts of reality. This is the pragmatic insight. We are parts of reality, and our own efforts in reality have an effect on the reality we're trying to understand. Now, that doesn't mean you're, you're free to believe anything. What it means is what we choose responsibly to believe may have some effect on the reality we're forming beliefs about. We don't get to just come up with any random belief. We can't just ignore the evidence. No, no, there's still reality. It constrains. There's objective reality, uh, and it constrains our uh, knowledge of it. We must uh, heed the evidence. But sometimes, where the evidence is not decisive, the final, uh, the final shape of reality may be determined in part by what we do with it. And what we do with it may be determined in part, certainly is determined in part, by what we choose to believe about it. Within the confines of what the evidence permits us to believe, uh, we may have an obligation to choose to believe those things about the world that help us live well in the world, and it may be that those things will help us make a better world, and maybe some of those beliefs will make themselves come true in the end. This is the insight of, uh, is life worth living? And again, the will to believe in other essays in popular philosophy. It's the insight of maybe uh, uh, the sentiment of rationality in the same book. It's, it's an insight you'll find in that book a lot. Anyway, this is actually a view consistent with both Gustav Fechner uh, whom James is drawing from rather a lot in this book, as well as the view of the Hegelians, with whom he is uh, largely disagreeing in this book. Fechner gets a cold lecture, lecture four. But uh, there are different ways of recognizing that our own efforts to figure out the universe are part of the universe we're figuring out. Philosophies are intimate parts of the universe. I love that line. And uh, do, 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 and let's let's just keep going. This is the philosophy of humanism in the widest sense. Our philosophies swell the current of being, add their character to it. They are a part of all that we have met, of all that makes us be. Now, now that's actually um, borrowing from Tennyson. Tennyson's poetry. Um, I believe the poem is called Ulysses. It's about Odysseus, or Ulysses. Uh, Tennyson's Ulysses. You can find it on the internet, I'm sure. Um, I am a part of all that I have met, yet all experiences an arch where through shines, or maybe gleams, that untraveled world whose margin fades forever and forever when I move. How dull it is to pause, to make an end, to rust, unburnished, not to shine in use, as though to breathe were life, as though merely to breathe were life. Uh, it's a wonderful poem about Odysseus, or uh, speaking for Odysseus. 
Uh, I am a part of all that I have met, says Odysseus. Uh, they are a part of all that we have met, says William James. Our philosophies add their own character to reality. They are, um, they become a part of what we know in the world. Uh, this is the philosophy of humanism in the widest sense, because humanism teaches that human beings and their choices matter. And our choice of what philosophy to accept affects the final structure of the universe, because it's part of the universe. Uh, etc., etc. Our thoughts determine our acts, and our acts redetermine the previous nature of the world. Another good sentence. The central pragmatic insight. Our thoughts determine our acts, and our acts redetermine the previous nature of the world. Uh, not, I don't think it means they change the past, but there's, there's the world, and there's our minds knowing it. And because our minds are actually part of the world, because it's not mind here, world here, there's the world, and it includes the mind. There's the world, and there's the mind knowing it. And what we choose to believe affects how we act in the world, which affects the final structure of the world. We start off with the world uh, in its state prior to our own decisions, our own actions, our own beliefs. But once we choose what to believe, once we act on it, we have uh, made a change in the nature of the world. We've added something to it. Hopefully something good. And thus our own beliefs uh, redetermine the previous nature of the world. They take the world as it started off and make it something a little bit different based on what we chose to do, based on what we chose to believe. Hopefully something a little bit better. Thus does foreignness get banished from our world, and far more so when we take the system of it pluralistically than when we take it monistically. So again, uh, this was in Lecture 1, James wants an idea of the world where we are not foreign to it, where we can understand ourselves to be uh, at home in the universe. And we can do that better when we think of the universe as not all one God, but um, as all touched by divinity, and all connected, but not all one. We are indeed internal parts of God and not external creations on any possible reading of the panpsychic system. Panpsychic meaning all is mind, or mind is everywhere, or the, the whole of reality has, uh, has consciousness, or consciousness contains all of reality, or something like that. We are indeed internal parts of God and not external creations on any possible reading of the panpsychic system, yet, because God is not the absolute, but is himself a part when the system is conceived pluralistically, his functions can be taken as not wholly dissimilar to those of the other smaller parts, as similar to our functions, consequently. And once again, good grief, this just connects to so much else in James. Um, it's a shame I haven't read um, more of the Segalians, and more importantly, uh, Fechner and Royce. And, um, hang on. Fechner, oh, Bergson. Fechner, Fechner, Royce, and Bergson. Major characters he draws from here. But especially Fechner. But wow, I'm having so much fun uh, noticing the connections to other stuff in William James. Um, God himself, one of the strivers in the universe trying to make a better world, is the picture of God in um, The Moral Philosopher and the Moral Life, another early writing of James in the will to believe in other essays in popular philosophy. God is not the absolute, but is himself a part when the system is conceived pluralistically, and therefore God's functions can be taken as not wholly dissimilar to those of the other smaller parts, as similar to our functions consequently. We are not completely different from God, and our own efforts to make a better world are not completely different from God's own efforts. In other words, uh, we are thinking of God as vast and big and good and powerful, but... Um, a God that doesn't control everything and who wants to enlist us in his cause of making the world better. And our own efforts to make the world better are a small part of how we can understand a small part of God. In fact, it is a small part of God because our minds connect with God. We are uh, co-conscious with God. There's no um, separation between our minds and God's minds on, on the Jamesian model. Having an environment, being in time... And working out a history just like ourselves, he escapes from the foreignness from all that is human, 
of the static, timeless, perfect, absolute. God is not a timeless, unchanging, perfect, absolute thing on this philosophy. God is not foreign to all that is human. God is working out a history like we are. God has something outside of himself. God is in time. Okay, that's quite enough of that for this week. More William James next time. Gee, let me know if, in a comment if you've watched this far and if you're actually interested in this stuff. If you're nerd enough to, to care about William James. See you next time.